Hey everyone, welcome to Blackboard. As we have been talking about the serological essays, in the previous video, we discussed ELISA and its types. You can find the link in the description box. And our today's topic is precipitation reaction. As we know, antigen and antibodies are used in diagnostic immunology because of their high specificity. Precipitation reaction is a type of antigen-antibody reaction in which antigens occur in a soluble form. When a soluble antigen reacts with its specific antibody at an optimum temperature, pH, and in the presence of electrolytes, once they come in cross proximity, they form non-covalent bonds with each other and results in an insoluble precipitates. This reaction is called precipitation reaction. A lattice is formed between the antigens and antibodies. In certain cases, it is visible as an insoluble precipitate. Lattice is actually a net-like structure formed by the interaction of multivalent antigens with multiple antibodies that are cross-linked with each other. So, precipitation or immunoprecipitation is a non-covalent interaction between soluble antigens and soluble antibodies that bind to form an insoluble complex that precipitates out of the solution. The antibodies that aggregate soluble antigens are called precipitins. As the size of antigen antibody lattice increases, it loses its solubility and precipitates out of the solution and become visible. When the precipitate just floats on the surface of solution, it is called flocule and the reaction is called flocculation. Let's have a look at the conditions necessary for precipitation reaction. The formation of antigen antibody lattice depends on the valency of both antigen and antibody. So, antibody must be bivalent, which means it must have two antigen binding sites. A precipitate will not form with a monovalent fab fragment. Antigen must be bivalent or polyvalent. That is, it must have at least two copies of the same epitope or different epitopes that react with different antibodies in a polyclonal sera. Antigens and antibodies must be in an appropriate concentration to each other so that lattice formation can occur and all the antigens and antibodies can precipitate. If antigens are in excess, there will be no cross linkages formed because antibodies are insufficient, hence no lattice formation because antigens and antibody complexes are small and insoluble, therefore no precipitation occurs. In case of antibody excess, Antigens can bind only with a few antibodies, so no cross linkages are formed, and many antibodies are free there. Because antigens are insufficient, thus no lattice formation takes place. In case of equal concentration of antigen and antibodies, cross linking occurs, as each antigenic epitope is shared between two antibodies, and maximum amount of lattice is formed that results in insoluble visible precipitates. As we have learned about the antigen antibody complex formation and precipitation reaction, now we can understand the precipitation curve. Precipitation curve is the graphical representation of precipitation reaction in which concentration of one reactant is kept constant and the concentration of second reactant is increased serially. We can divide the precipitation curve into three zones. The zone at which there are equivalent number of antigen and antibodies in solution is called zone of equivalence, where maximum amount of lattice is formed. A precipitation reaction is interfered above or below the zone of equivalence due to obstruction in lattice formation. The zone just below the zone of equivalence, where there are less antigens and antibodies are in excess, is called a prozone phenomena. The zone that is above the zone of equivalence, 
where antigens are greater in number than antibodies is called post-zone phenomena. There are several precipitation methods applied in the clinical laboratory for the diagnosis of disease. These can be performed in a semi-solid media such as agar or agarose or in non-gel spot media such as cellulose acetate. We'll discuss about these precipitation methods in the next video. Let's have a look at some clinical applications of precipitation reaction. It is widely used in diagnostic immunology. It is used in the detection of syphilis in patients by VDRL test. VDRL stands for Venereal Disease Research Laboratory Test. It is also used in the separation of specific proteins by precipitating them using their specific antibodies. It can be used in the grouping of different microbes, such as Streptococcus, based on the presence of antigens. It can be used for the standardization of toxins with their respective antitoxins. Despite of its use in diagnostic immunology, here are some limitations of precipitation reaction. The sensitivity of precipitation reaction is comparatively less than other techniques, such as agglutination. It can be more time-consuming. It won't occur properly in the absence of polyvalent antigens. It won't occur in the absence of equivalent number of antigen and antibodies. So that's all about today's lecture. If you liked the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you.